All right, hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a full workflow of using frames for Figma add-on as well as ACSS tokens. You'll see how easy it is to wireframe a website in Figma thanks to frames components. Then once we will have a wireframe done, we are going to style it with ACSS tokens. And then once we will be satisfied with how it looks and feels, we are going to take this designed website from Figma into the Bricks page builder where we are going to build the actual website. Okay, so but before I show you anything, let me just tell you uh, two quick things. First, if you bought frames for Figma add-on, if that's you behind the camera looking at me right now, me and Kevin, we would like to say a big thank you. You've made a great investment and we are going to make sure that your investment is going to be worth every penny. Second, the point of this video is to just to show you a workflow basics, an example, okay? Currently, right now, the priority for us is to finish documentation so that every one of you who bought frames for Figma add-on can go read and learn how to use these tools, okay? For that very reason, because documentation is very time consuming. For that very reason, I'm not going to spend too much of a time designing the page. I will try my best to make it look pretty, okay? But I'm not going to spend like eight to 10 hours just for a simple home page. The point of this video is to just to show you an example, okay? So with that being said, I think we are ready. Let's go. Okay, so I started by importing a new frames for Figma add-on file. Now, I was thinking about what kind of website we were going to build. And since it's still summer and people are going on summer holidays and traveling around the world, I thought that making website for travel agency would be a good fit. So I renamed our project as travel agency and then I went to the identity page to update our client's business information. Okay, now for the actual business logo. I wanted to find some palm trees. But before I go and search for it, I like to create a new folder on my desktop with a project name. It will be a place where I can store all the media and project files, which helps me to stay organized. Once I found the logo that I liked, I just downloaded it to our project folder. From there, it was just a matter of uploading that logo to Figma and resizing it a little bit. Now, a lot of you guys have asked me how to change the logo. It's very easy and all you have to do is to just copy your new logo by pressing Command plus C or Ctrl plus C if you are on Windows and then select the original one and press Command plus Shift plus R. Additionally, you can right click it and select Place to replace option. From there, we want to adjust the mobile logo and make it a little bit smaller. Next step would be to create our menu, so I headed over to navigation page. Now, to change your menu items all at once, we just need to search for our menu item name, which in this case was navlink1. And select all instances of that menu item. Then on the right side of Figma design panel, we have an option to rename the menu item to whatever we like, for example, home. And now I will do the same for the rest of our menu items. To make sure our changes have been made, we can go to the header frames components page and check if everything fits correctly. All looking good, so now we are ready to start wireframing. Let's go to the website design page. So to start wireframing a website, we just need to search for frames components in the assets panel in Figma structure pane. I will start by searching for a header. Once I find it, I just need to drag and drop it into our design canvas. It doesn't matter which one we choose, as we can change it with one click later on. And then, for example, I can start searching for a hero frame component. The process is the same for all the other parts. And once I was pretty happy with it, I selected all the frames and wrap them into the auto layout frame. Now, if you would like to change the chosen frame component, you just have to go to the Figma design panel and choose any frame component you like. I played with this for a little while until I get a pretty solid structure for our website. 
The process is the same for every frame component, so I will skip through the rest of the site. And here we go, wireframe is complete and this is how a basis of our future website will look like. Then I was ready to start making some changes. First I wanted our header to be transparent so that it would overlay our hero section. Doing this is an easy way to achieve that modern website design look. Here I just made some quick changes to our copy. Now, in the community, one user asked me to create at least one section from scratch, instead of using frames components. So I decided that I will basically recreate this feature section here. I'm not going to walk you through this, as I already recorded a tutorial on this. But feel free to enjoy my suffering here. At this point, it was a good time to start searching for some images. I wanted our website to have that summer vibe, so I searched for mostly palm trees. And then it was just a matter of applying that photos mostly as a background. Now, I wanted to change the background color of this footer here, however, I noticed I haven't changed the color palette yet. So, here you can see me grabbing a color from this image. I wanted a pastel red color, so I had to adjust the color a little bit. And once I had the color I want, I just changed the ACSS token's primary color palette by mapping the HSL values. Looking at the whole page, I decided that I want to grab the image from our content section here and apply it as a background. And as you can see, having the image on top of another image was not a good idea in this case, so I just removed it. And then it was just a matter of adjusting the colors for the text on the left so that it's readable. Now I decided to adjust the colors of our hero section. I wanted to apply some overlay color to our background image and I also adjusted the text colors, all by using ACSS tokens, nice and easy. Ok, looking at our buttons in our hero section, I thought that I could spice things a bit by changing the left button to our primary button. And I also got an idea to make our buttons look more interesting. I wanted to give our button a ribbon shape. And luckily for us, ACSS tokens and frames for Figma add-on makes it very, very easy. We just have to go to our buttons components page and adjust the shape here. And as you can see, our buttons have a very nice shape right now. But we also want to adjust the shape of our buttons on hover. And to see our buttons in action, we can preview our website in a new tab and hover over them with our mouse. 
so overall I think it looks pretty good, but I think we can make it a little bit better by adjusting our button shape on hover even more. Perfect, now looking at our hero section here, the typeface of our headings just doesn't fit here. I knew I could do way better than this, so I went to fontshare.com, which is a great resource for custom fonts, and searched for something that could fit here. After a while I found this typeface called Britney, so I downloaded that font and installed it on my MacBook. From there, it was just about changing the typeface for our headings in Figma Token Studio plugin. Now, looking at our heading, I think it was a bit small, so I decided to apply a CSS token called dh1 larger, which is the same as applying a class text larger in a CSS WordPress plugin. And in fact, I decided to apply a larger font size on all of the headings. Next, I added some content to our destination cards. And then I also changed the text color here to a shade medium color token. I also thought that I could give a nice touch to our image cards here by applying some border radius, so I just searched for ACSS tokens called Rounded and chose a token called Rounded S. Now, after looking at our destination cards, I thought that we could increase the height of our images here. They look great, so it makes sense to make them more dominant. Okay, next I changed the copy of our heading in this section here. I also needed to apply some overlay color here as well, because the text was very hard to read. And then I apply the border radius to these images as well. Now at this point I took a quick look at the website as a whole and I noticed that this section here is very wide. There is a lot of white space we need to fill in somehow. So the idea came to my mind that we could use some Palm SVGs images as an accent details here. So I started searching for some SVGs on Google and after a while I found some pretty good options. However, when I wanted to import them into Figma, I noticed that two of these images were not SVGs. They were in PNG format instead. It's always good to use SVGs if you can because you can easily change their color. In PNGs, the color is sort of set in stone. It can be changed, but you would need to open a graphic editor and do it from there. Whereas with SVGs, it's very easy to change their color. And I'm not just talking about Figma, I'm also talking about web development as a whole. So here's a cool trick you might want to use if you have a PNG image that you want to convert to SVG format. There are many online image vectorizer tools out there. You only need to upload the image and it will automatically make it a vector file, so that essentially we end up having an SVG one. Now after importing the SVG files, I wanted to somehow adjust the FAQ section at the bottom. It looked very dull and boring. So I decided to apply a background image with an overlay color. Applying overlay color here is a good thing to make the text appear more readable, but I don't like the cutoff at the bottom. I would much rather have a smooth transition to our footer dark background color. So to achieve this, I decided to create a custom color token with linear gradient. And voila, the result is much better. Now, to style the FAQ section even more, I just applied some ACSS color tokens to the text layers, as well as FAQ items, adjusted some spacing and border radius.
Following to our footer section, I also adjusted the colors and some spacing. Now let's move to our testimonial section here. Besides changing the headline to something different, I wanted to make use of those Palm SVGs that I downloaded. So I set them to absolute position and just randomly move them to where I like them to be. Initially I gave them a light shade color, but I didn't like it as much, so I decided to create some new gradient color tokens and I think it looks way better than just a simple light shade color. And we also can't forget about our third palm tree, so I decided to move it on our destination card section, but this time with just a light shade color. So I took another quick look at our website and it starts to look pretty good, but I noticed we have a small problem here with one of these palm trees overflowing in section here. But we will fix this later. Another thing that I noticed is that our sections didn't flow one to another seamlessly. So to make this website look even better, I wanted to create a custom shape divider, something like a dreamy cloud or something similar. So I opened up my affinity photo and I found a pretty good looking effect from a brush tool. And after a few minutes of work, I had my custom shape divider created. From there, it was just about setting that custom shape divider to an absolute position and moving it into sections where it made sense. I also wanted to style our testimonial section a little bit, so I added a small amount of colors. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how our website looks. At this point I was ready to make a mobile design of this. And in Frames for Figma add-on this is the easiest thing to do. All I had to do was to click on a component and select a mobile version. And also, since those shape dividers are not part of Frames components, I had to adjust them manually, but that took me only a few seconds. And here's the result. So once I have finished designing a website in Figma, I could start building it in Bricks Builder. I installed a new WordPress site on my server and installed a Bricks theme as well as automatic CSS and Frames WordPress plugins. We are going to build the homepage first by adding frames components slash templates and once that will be done, we will add a header and a footer as well. So to start, I went back to Figma to see the layers names. For example, a hero section here is called Hero India. Now I knew that in Bricks, I have to import frames template called exactly the same, which is Hero India. For the second section, a custom one that I built, I could build it manually in bricks as well, but Frames has in fact very similar if not the same component called Feature Section Charlie. A 
And the process is the same for every other section here. Just scan the layer name in Figma, see what it's called, and then add that component slash template in Bricks Builder from Remote Template Library. And just like that, in a matter of 1-2 to two minutes, basis for my homepage was done, including header and a footer. And then I was ready to style everything up, and as you can see, I started with the footer element. The next thing was to upload every image we used, and since I had all the images in my desktop folder, it was very easy to do. And I also needed to upload our custom font. And after that, I just had to change the settings in the Bricks Builder theme styles to make sure that every heading is using that custom font. And honestly guys, from now on it was just about styling that page with automatic CSS variables and adding some images here and there. So I'm not going to explain every little thing here as it would take a huge amount of time, so I will just randomly pick some parts of the video and let you to watch it. Last thing I want to say is that if you like this kind of a video, I would highly appreciate if you could reward me by hitting a like button. Additionally, if you would like to see more of these kinds of videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice day!